Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Hey, thank you to Sharsine, man. Your comments on my video make my day. Way back in the 200 BC, Hipparchus had figured out that the Earth's axis is actually precessing. So what he did was, he compared the position of stars relative to the sun. He had all the past observational data, which he compared to. Like me, you must be thinking, how did he compare the star's position relative to the sun? Because we cannot see the stars during the daylight. So what he did was, during the lunar eclipse, when the earth comes between the moon and the sun, you can see the stars and you even know the position of the sun. Because obviously, when the moon will totally be in earth's shadow, that's when the sun will be directly 180 degree in the opposite direction behind the observer. And his observations clearly suggested that the stars had changed their position over the decades and the data that he had were not matching. Hence he concluded that the earth itself is moving or changing its orientation. Hence we can see the change in the position of all the stars in the sky. And this is how he concluded that the earth's axis is precessing. Now we know the precession of the axis takes about 26,000 years to complete a full cycle. So this axis makes a cone in space. This is what it looks like. The consequences of this precession is actually that our pole star changes. Currently, our pole star is Polaris. You can see this circle, all the stars around it. So these will be our pole star in the future or they were in the past. About 13,000 years from now, the star Vega will be our pole star. And the more interesting thing will be is that with the actual drift changing, the seasons that we experience on the Earth will also flip. There will be a flip in the hemisphere. The North Hemisphere, when we experience summer right now, we will have winter and vice versa. The Earth's axis will be tilted in the opposite direction than it is now. So a major change that you can experience because of this precession motion is that when we talk about a year, we say that it's a time taken for the earth to go around the sun. So if we take the point where the earth starts from as a one equinox, one equinox is the day when we have equal day and nights. That's 12 hours day, 12 hours night. And we go around the sun. Before we reach the exact point, we experience one equinox 20 minutes earlier and this is because the Earth's axis has changed its orientation a little bit. When we have to put a value on it, the Earth's axis shifts one degree or precesses one degree every 72 years. So why does the Earth's precession actually happen? So when we talk about the shape of Earth itself, it's not perfectly spherical. It's more like an oblate spheroid, which means that it has a bulge at the equator. That means the diameter at the equator is more than the diameter at the poles. So this small bulge on the equator causes this precession motion. So when we are traveling in a car and we take a sharp turn, we experience a force in the opposite direction. This is the same force acting on the Earth's equator. The spin of the Earth causes a centrifugal force and hence the bulge at the equator. So this bulge is being attracted by the gravitational forces of the sun and the moon. If you have seen a spinning top, it likes to maintain its orientation unless there is a force acted upon it. For the same reason, when there is a force acting on the earth's spin, that's the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun, the earth's axis precesses. This is all for today. Please do like the video, share the video with your friends and hit the bell icon. See you in the next video. Till then, as always, stay curious, stay awesome.